Oops, sound check. I uh, had a bit of an issue there for a little bit, but hopefully you're hearing me. I'm about to get started in what on the screen says 30 seconds, but uh, might be a little bit longer than that, but I'm working on it. I feel like this is my shirt and sweater combination is very off today, so bear with me. Oh, I'm still, my mic is hot. My mic is live. Okay, I'm muting myself. I got 10 seconds. I'm setting up, people. I'm setting up. Phone's ready. The power on my soundboard is out, so I can't play any more music. This dot, this dot, this dot song. I gotta sing the music, cause there's no more music in the soundboard. It won't charge, it's been plugged in for the last 10 minutes. But it is not making any sound i'm going to turn the camera on me now <clears throat> oh no that was the wrong button ah there i am hello everybody i know it's been a while since i last live streamed I really hope this is working and you're seeing me right now. I'm seeing me right now because I have a monitor in front of me that shows me my face. Hi, Dan. I know. I'm very uncomfortable. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> normally what I do at the beginning of a Coding Train live stream <laughs> is I make a sound from a train whistle. And I have so many train whistles right now. But we will use, because I know Stig Stig is in the audience. <clears throat> oh, wait a second here. I don't, I don't see the chat in my monitor. Let me open this. Let me get this out here so I can keep an eye, the corner of my eye on the chat. Uh, all right. All right. Just uh, bear with me here. I did not. Uh, th this is back to, back to the roots of the coding train where I barely was set up and ready to go when the time arrived for me to stream. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Thank you to the people of Denmark <laughs> who presented, well, it wasn't really the people of Denmark. It was a small group who gathered this past summer for Processing Community Day in Copenhagen and uh, uh, gave me this wonderful treasured gift now of mine, a authentic uh, 1950s era uh, Danish train whistle actually used by Danish train conductors in Denmark. Uh, and I will begin today's live stream with the traditional blowing of the train whistle. It's like, it's like uh, for Rosh Hashanah, we blow the shofar. And here on the coding train, we blow the train whistle for the new year. It's not the new year. It's like November. It's not even the beginning of the school year or the beginning of January or any sort of new year under any calendar. Is it Lunar New Year? Nope. None of those things. It's just been a while since I live streamed. So it feels like the start of something new. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you for indulging me with that. Um, and <clears throat> I know uh, uh, RLB in the chat is saying Danish, Dan-ish. But that's one of the things that I especially enjoyed about being in Denmark. Uh, everything was called like Dan, not everything, but a lot of things were called Dan something. For example, I could hail a Dan taxi. The taxi service was Dan taxi. I'm, I'm, I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly, but I quite enjoyed it. Hello to uh, XX Mr. PhD. Um, Osama Isa says, you speak so fast. No, I don't. You're watching 1.5X. Don't you know you're watching 1.5X? Check, check your settings. It's 1.5X. Live in life at 3X, baby. <laughs> if anybody knows that reference, if anybody knows that reference, I will send you a coding train t-shirt. <laughs> okay. Uh, coding train t-shirts don't even exist, but I will have them made. 
But actually, that is a seg that is related to today's live stream. Uh, Kathy says hello. Everybody say thank you to Kathy. Many other people too, but Kathy for um, has been doing a tremendous amount of work. Um, on the Coding Train website, which I will be going through and talking about today. Um, one thing I'm wondering about um, is, uh, in, in the time since I last live streamed, um, I believe YouTube released a new Q&A feature for live streaming, and I didn't, <laughs> might have been smart to do, didn't bother to check if I had to enable that or anything on a live stream, but is that feature running? Does anybody know? Does anybody know anything about it? I've got, a, I've got a second computer over here in case you're wondering. I used to cover my second computer with a green paper so it was invisible. Now I just put it off to the side. Um, but let me double check. Let me take a look at the stream page. Um, and um, uh, do, can I ask a question? Engage with your audience. Start a Q&A. Oh, oh, it's me. I have to do it. I'm going to start a Q&A. Oh, Marco Silvio. Oh, no, no sound. That's the song I usually play when somebody joins the membership. But the iPad, where I play sound effects. Start a Q&A. Oh, it's me talking to myself. Uh, it's, it's, it won't come alive. It's been plugged in for like an hour. Also, the heat is on. Heat is on, and um, it's getting kind of warm in here, so I'm now going to turn that off um, because it is a loud noise. Uh, it is an electric heater that is just one of these garage heaters because I am in a garage space. Um, I think it's time for me to do a tour of this space soon because uh, it's kind of ready for that. Um, wait, okay. Oh, and Coding Garden is here. I don't know, Coding Garden. Hopefully, you didn't mind my hilarious tweet this morning. I don't know if you can you still go find my tweet. This Twitter's Twitter still up. By the way, I had this idea. <laughs> digression after digression after digression is the name of the game on the coding train. But um, what are we going to do today? Was what some people had asked in the chat, and I was kind of thinking, oh, we should just mess around with Twitter while it's still active. But I made a tweet this morning to share the live stream that um, Coding Garden came and did as a guest. I think this was back in 2018. Like another, like. Another era of life, of like that's like a hundred years ago at this in in today's time, um, in internet time, but uh, where he demonstrated how to build a full stack clone of Twitter. So I thought, hey, why don't we just rebuild Twitter today? I think it was Beck Hill, uh, who I'm like Beck Hill's number one fan ever since um, I got to see her perform at the Evening of Unnecessary uh, Detail. There's a fly, there's a fly buzzing around. Let me know if you can hear it. It's in the light, it likes my light. Um, tweeted something about starting something new called Shrub, and all your followers are leaves. So, and that works with Coding Garden. So we could just rebuild Twitter today on today's live stream. What do you guys think about that? <laughs> Probably not what we're gonna do. Um, but uh, in the before times, okay, start a Q&A. Wait, no, 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 okay. Ah, but I was coming back to something, the membership, the, let's, let's go for the Q&A. We're gonna see how this works. Start a Q and A. Say something. Oh, uh, I have to start a Q. I, I'm starting a Q and A. Oh, Q and A. Start Q and A. Okay, I started a Q and A. Questions. So I think if you post a question, it'll show up now. Interesting. I'm looking at it on this. I'm slightly afraid to bring it onto my live stream. Um, also, uh, yeah. Gosh, I have so many things to talk about today. And I, I kind of had some notes. Um, <laughs> two, oh, th wait, there are questions, but they're just showing up in the chat. Like, shouldn't they show up somewhere else? <laughs> I see, is this working? I see questions. Oh, I just see questions. But this is no different than watching the chat. Are you all posting to the questions? Like, am I not seeing regular chat? Are there separate chats? I have no idea what's going on. There's like a lot of questions, way too many questions for me to answer. Biggest fear. You know, I had one of those dreams. No, let's not get into that. <laughs> Edit that out. Oh wait, I'm live? 
Sorry, what? <laughs> um, Oregon Trail is an old game, right? It brings back a lot of memory. Yes. So my planned topic for today is to, and uh, I don't, let's see if this button's going to work. Uh, oh, wait a second. Did I not make a button for it? Okay, hold on. Please hold. I can see the question. I can see the questions, but it's just a stream of questions. Like, literally, the I, I, look, I love YouTube and I appreciate all of the tremendous amount of work and features that are available. It's by, by, like, the coding creator would not exist by YouTube. So I don't really mean this as a criticism. I know this is a new feature. It's in beta or maybe alpha or maybe it's not. But, um, and I do, I do like that I'm seeing a lot of questions. But I would have, what I think it needs is some organization to the questions, or maybe maybe I just need a moderator to pick them out, and there's some way I can, you know, through the, uh, I'm sure, very easily accessible and beginner-friendly YouTube API, <laughs> bring, um, bring questions onto the screen. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Will I actually play the Oregon Trail? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, hold on. Uh, so let's end the Q&A, because this is not working. I'll do the Q&A later, and when I'm just focused on it, I can look at the questions and answer the questions. But right now, I am not ready to do the Q&A. Uh, so uh, Coding Garden writes, I have specifically sent this in the question box. So there is a question box, and now if I hit end Q&A, it will remove all the questions. That's terrible. Okay, hold on, questions. Top, live chat. Okay, I'm gonna leave that open. So I can now switch to the chat again, I think, questions, live chat. This is, so I think it's very useful, but um, I think, and, and, and probably the intention is for a moderator to be uh, kind of operating the chat stuff because I can't easily with the way I run my live streams switch back and forth. Maybe I should have two different monitors, one with the questions, one with the chat. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry for not having a plan about that. But I see Marcelo Silva's, I posted a question, but this is a regular chat message. Okay. So, um, oh, I know what I could do. I can see the chat over here. And then I can put the questions over here on this screen. I'm a genius. Genius. I have multiple screens. Okay, but don't show me the Q&A box. I want to see the questions. There we go. All right. So I see your qu <laughs> questions here, which, oh, that's the chat. Questions. Okay. I see your questions here. There are so many of them. And then I see your chat here. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you, RLB, for your lovely message. Hello from Belarus. Um, all right. So it's already been, I don't know, like 10 minutes or so, and I haven't done anything at all. Let me add my button for what we're going to do today, because this is going to be necessary. Uh, add a scene, scene, a scene. I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to call it Oregon Trail. Uh, and it's going to be the um, Apple II. Okay. Um, okay, that should do it. Let's see if this works. Oh, no signal. That's fine, though. So um, just very briefly. Okay, so I'm over here now. Um, and when we get to the Oregon Trail, we're going to play the Oregon Trail on this. The blue thing you're saying is, will be the output of this monitor. The blue, th you're not saying it. The blue thing you're seeing will be the output of this monitor, um, which is fed through, I don't know if you can see this, a um, like analog video out to HDMI converter with its very long HDMI cable <laughs> that runs all the way along the floor, all the way back to over here where the streaming PC is, and then I'm standing at my desk over here, and here I am. So um, before I get going with the content, I want to tell you about uh, today's sponsor of The Coding Train, which I am really excited about. Like a major thing has changed in uh, a huge project that I did recently, so I really want to tell you about it, and I just want to pull up this page so I make sure um, 
I have um, all the correct um, information. Okay, so let me pull over to here. Um, let me put this uh, banner up top, which is the link that you're gonna want, codingtrain.com choo-choo. So, oh, not coding. Wait, it says codingtrain.com slash choo-choo. That's not what it should say. <laughs> Oops. Okay, I will redirect that. Look, we're, we're gonna live do a pull request to redirect that link because the correct link, <laughs> I am the worst. Uh, the correct link is curiositystream.com slash choo-choo. Let's go there. Nope, nope, nope. I can't, oh, I can't get anything right. I can't even spell curiosity. There's no you. <clears throat> uh, it's, just, it's European. <clears throat> Somebody will know that reference. Uh, curiositystream.com slash choo-choo. There we go. Curiositystream.com slash choo-choo. That's the URL you're going to want. Let's go to uh, GitHub. Welcome to the coding train. Uh, GitHub, the coding train, slash the coding train. Um, there is a nice little uh, redirects.json file right here um, that I can very quickly... Uh, Am I not logged in? Oh. <laughs> sign up. No, I don't want to sign up. I want to log in, people. Thank you. Sign in. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, authentication. Two-factor. Does the music turn on yet? <laughs> I, I think I've lost all of my viewers in the last five minutes. Uh, authenticator. Uh, uh, let's just switch back to here so you don't see me typing my code. Five, nine, one. See, I typed different numbers than I said. That's how much, that's how much I care about security. Uh, bring this back over here. We're going to go to redirects.json. Uh, we're going to hit edit. And we're going to add a redirect, which goes from uh, choo choo to uh, here. And so now if you, um, it'll take a bit for the site to rebuild, but um, hopefully, and I'm, no, 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 no. <laughs> All right, how many of you think I should do this? <laughs> Are there any Twitter engineers right now struggling with the decision as to whether they should do this? They should not. I will not, even though I have many, many, many times in my life. <clears throat> Create a new branch. Uh, redirect. Sponsor. Propose the change. I'm proposing the change. Uh, let's create the pull request. Do we dare? Um, eh, there's no conflicts. I mean, it's going to run a whole lot of tests and things, but all those tests are technically for building the um, website. By the way, the, the, the correct link is uh, in what is is uh, in the description and um, the, uh, I didn't make I don't think I made a pinned comment, but I could. Um, okay, let's see here. Uh, chat. Oh, the, it's the Q and A. I can't type a chat message here because now I have the Q and A going. <sighs> I start this whole thing over. I'll come back to the sponsor in a bit. Uh, you know what it is, and I'm going to come back to telling you why that's exciting, what major change has happened. Um, but I am. I, um, let's go. Let Let's talk about some of some recent announcements about things that have been happening on the coding train, and I will come back and merge this pull request soon enough. Okay. So let's go over to Discord. So if you aren't in the coding train Discord. Um, come and join us. This is at thecodingtrain.com slash discord. Um, it is where I once a month will post an announcement about things going on. You can see that there were two announcements posted, uh, November 12th and then yesterday because I didn't post anything in October. I'm very, very strict with myself about limiting my use of the at everyone uh, mention in Discord. So if you want to come to a Discord channel where the uh, owner of the Discord server is very strict 
with themselves about their use of at everyone, then the coding train is for you. Um, so let's talk about things that have been happening. Um, I have a new uh, coding challenge video out. Uh, it's about 45 minutes long. I built a 3D renderer. Let me keep an eye on the chat here. Um, am I looking at the chat? Yes. Um, uh, I built a, a, a simple 3D renderer in um, AppleSoft Basic. Uh, maybe I can run it and talk about it a bit today. Um, one of the things I would like to do is uh, look at some recent comments and questions that are uh, posted on that video. Let me come back to that. Um, another thing, I am, you know, uh, um, I started working with uh, a, a new uh, team to develop uh, shorts. I know people have strong feelings one way or the other. Uh, we're going to try this as a one-month experiment. I've recorded a whole bunch of them uh, answering your questions, speaking of Q&A. Um, so if you haven't noticed these and want to check them out, um, uh, you know this link is available in the uh, Discord. Um, but you can come see one of the recent shorts that I posted. There also is a TikTok account. I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I have yet to do any... Uh, dancing in the TikTok account, although I was ahead of my time, was I not? Because I remember live streaming, I don't know, five plus years ago where I would play music and dance around. <laughs> that was my thing. <clears throat> uh, the other announcement here is that there is a live stream incoming. Oh, wait, that's right now. That's what you're watching right now. So if you want to get notifications about when the live streams are happening, uh, beyond uh, YouTube, if you subscribe and bell and all that, I do tend to try to announce them in Discord. Um, there is a notifications role. Uh, if you're not aware, if you're already in the Discord, you can sign up for a notifications role, which uh, will get you additional notifications beyond my more rare uh, everyone. Um, the Discord invite is not working? Okay, this is why I live stream to discover these things. Let's, can anyone confirm or deny that this is the case. Let's go the codingtrain.com slash discord. Okay. Invite invalid. Okay. Wait, guess what? Guess where that goes? It's a redirect. <laughs> so we're here. Why not? Welcome to the coding train where I reprogram redirects on my website. I find broken links and fix them. Live streaming for hours on end, finding broken links and fixing them. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, edit. Edit. No? What did I do? What did I do? Ah, edit file. So let's first figure out where is the redirect. Discord, Discord, Discord. Uh, okay. I thought we had this back. Okay, let's try. Is it the coding train? We might have changed it to that. Nope. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna create, I don't think this is gonna show anything. Uh, we'll have to figure that out later, but I think if I go here and then do uh, invite people um, and edit link, um, no limit, expire, Never generate a new link, copy, and <laughs> um, let's then go back to here and paste that in there. So we'll use this invite right now. I don't know what happened to our fancy um, other uh, vanity URL, but this should now be fixed. Um, and the Discord link worked for me, says Clara. Okay. Well, I don't know now. The invite in the video description works. Oh, interesting. Well, what's in there? I guess I could have just grabbed that one, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. I will figure this out later. At the moment, uh, the, apparently there's an invite in the video description that should work. And then uh, this new one that I just added to here uh, should also work. Okay, back to Discord. Um, the other thing that I really wanted to uh, mention is that um, Coding Train uh, social media is doing some new uh, things. Let's see, is Twitter, is Twitter still up? Looks like it. Um, so on Instagram, 
you'll see there are two posted right now. Uh, what we are doing is sharing projects from the Passenger Showcase, which is a new feature on the website. So if you've ever made something related to, and, and it can be very loosely related to, like my goal is for people to share what they're doing. And the organizing principle of the Coding Train website is to take a project and share it associated with one of my videos, which isn't the maybe the, the you know, maybe someday I'll have to rethink that. So, but, you know, don't worry. It's not required that you, like, watch the video. You started with the sample code. You were made this project. And it doesn't have to be so perfect. So if you've made something you want to share, if it's related to, uh, if you made something that used the Seller Automata algorithm, you know, find the video that uh, that uses that. I have, I have something for everyone. <laughs> so uh, if we look at any of these, uh, most recently, let's look at the Mora Rose. I'm not logged in, so I guess I can't click on these. Um, but um, you could have your work featured on the Coding Train social media. So tag the Coding Train on Twitter or the.coding.train on um, Instagram. Um, and uh, please submit to the Passenger Showcase. If you're wondering what I'm talking about with the Passenger Showcase, um, what that is, and, and soon, coming soon, in fact, I'm supposed to have a meeting about this today, <laughs> uh, there will be a new page under community, which is just the page for just the showcase, which will show all the showcase projects. We're working on that. But right now you can see uh, here on the homepage, there are passenger showcase highlights. They cycle through different ones. So we can see image dithering, uh, labyrinths. So that's wild. Let's take a look at this one. Um, this is based off of, oh, I love this. That is, that is lovely. Let's try, I got to get this soundboard working so I don't have to keep singing. Let's try plugging it into a different plug. I mean, that should work. I'm going to just try plugging it into this laptop. Let's see if it'll charge off of this laptop, which might be a bad idea for a variety of reasons, but we'll see. Um, is there any chance of a coding trade Mastodon instance? Oh, 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 funny you should ask. <laughs> uh, this is a great project. Thank you. Let me, let me circle back to that. Um, and then um, if you go to any given coding challenge, like if I go to this Poisson disk uh, on here, we'll see the video, the time codes, um, the source code for it. And then, oh my goodness, what? Nobody has submitted. You could be the first. You could submit a poisson, poisson project <laughs> uh, to this page. It'd be the first one featured here. So we're going to have to go to a different uh, challenge. Let's try Purple Rain, I know has a lot. So you can see here, um, here are all the projects that have been submitted uh, related to the Purple Rain video. And if I click on any one of them. We can take a look at it. Casio, Mwah! I love this. This is fantastic. Um, so, oh, Pivi is asking, um, <laughs> this is so funny. I have a Q&A going and I'm answering the questions from the live chat. This is very on brand for me to like completely mess this up. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, uh, oh, so many good questions. Um, okay, Coding Garden is handling that one in the chat. Uh, thank you. Thank you uh, for uh, Coding Garden to handle that. And, and let me just read the, the comment. When working on a team, it is better to commit to a separate branch and then have your changes reviewed by other team members before merging into main. And so um, this is also true, like for the Coding Train website, the main branch is the deployment branch. So if I were to submit a change, if I were to merge, commit that directly to main and it had a mistake in it, it could break the website. And by committing it to another branch, the GitHub system actually runs through a set of tests and offers the chance to check it before it's merged. This doesn't mean you can't break stuff. Like It's no different than me making the pull request and then just merging it. <laughs> but there are a few checks and balances and tests that run along the way. That's what I'm waiting for to happen. So right here, um, we can see, I think it's actually done. All successful, yeah, sorry. So it's actually done now. All the test checks have passed. Usually there's a lot more, so I don't know what's going on here. But, um, and you, it, maybe it's just because I'm, anyway, the tests have passed. It's got a deploy preview. I'm not really sure what's going on, but I'm gonna merge it. Um, and then we'll also take, the site takes quite a while to build. 
because of the amount of content and the Gatsby system that I'm using. So the redirect probably won't be live just yet. It could be like 20 minutes, to be honest. Like it takes a build. So I'll come back to it. We'll check it. Um, uh, lots of questions about all the Twitter drama. I don't. I'm. I'm. I'm not. I don't think I'll be addressing the Twitter drama other than uh, making poorly uh, thought out, not funny, dad jokes about it um, <clears throat> to the best of my ability. Okay. Back to announcements. Anything else? Oh, and so more about the website. I was kind of showing you some of the features of the website, and it is my intention to make a video announcement about the website, even if that's like a year after the website launched. Uh, if anybody wants to help with that, I don't, you know, I don't know that's really a serious call for help because I don't know what, what, what help I really need other than getting myself to do it. But I really want to encourage people to read this uh, very um, thoughtful case study report about all the design thinking and um, uh, process and methodology that went in. And I'm my green screen, is it, is it this that's what's no it's over here what's over here oh this is a this is a bookcase <laughs> so hold on <laughs> that's really bothering me so i just need to like turn the camera slightly that way and i think it will go away uh, yeah and this is a bell um which i can put over the side um but um there's a lot of thought and care and time went into the work on this website from Design Systems International and obviously a ton of people from the Coding Train community who really helped. Um, um, so and you should check out all the work of Design Systems International, but if you wanna learn about uh, web design and systems design, um, I think I, I would like to think that you will learn a lot and be inspired by their wonderful work on the Coding Train website. Um, okay. Uh, look, uh, let me take a question. I'm just going to, every once in a while, I'm going to look over on the Q&A and I'm going to pluck a question from thin air. Oh, the heat came back on it. It got cold in here, I guess. Um, to let me know if the audio bothers you um, much with the, that going. Do you work full-time for YouTube? Well, first of all, I definitely don't work full-time for YouTube. I think what the question means is, do you do YouTube? Your YouTube work, is that your kind of full-time job or do you still actually program for a living? So the answer to that is neither. <laughs> I definitely don't actually program for a living. And so, you know, you should, you should be wary of me in that sense. Like I am here as hopefully somebody who can uh, help share knowledge with you, help inspire you, maybe, uh, you know, dare I say, entertain you. You, you know, I understand that, I'll let you, that there is quite probably a large category of people who are not entertained by me at all, <laughs> but it's possible. I know that, that small, some people are maybe a little bit. So, um, but I would say my, my, uh, if I were to characterize my full-time job, well, so I do have a full-time salaried job, which is what I get paid to do. And YouTube is not that I do derive revenue from the coding train work for sure. But my full-time uh, day job, I, I am on sabbatical right now from that. I will be um, going back to teaching in January is at New York University. So there is a graduate program, an undergraduate program in interactive media, uh, ITP and IMA, and I teach classes there. This is how I started doing all this. I was making videos for my classes. Then I posted the videos online. Then I started live streaming. Then I started making videos that don't have to do with my classes. I got to get back to making videos that have to do with my classes. So it's all kind of a big mess. Um, but that is my full-time job. Uh, you know, the higher education system in the United States is broken in so many ways. So I, I don't, you know, make, I don't want to make any bones, is that the right expression, <laughs> about, uh, you know, the complexity and opportunity that is that only some people and privilege that some people have to be able to attend a school like NYU uh, in terms of the expense and the cost and the, um, you know, the location and all of that. But um, if you are somebody who's applying to college or graduate school, you're certainly welcome to check out ITP IMA and, and uh, you know, ask me a question on social media or uh, email the department who can forward them. You can find my email online. I'm just very bad I don't wanna, at answering my email. Uh, I, don't, I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just saying, you know, hey, uh, uh, itp.nyu.edu. Let's see. What's happening with the Coding Train website?
being built. So I'm, I'm, I'm logging into my Netlify account right now um, just to take a look at that. <laughs> uh, let's log in with GitHub. I, I just moved my screen away so you couldn't see it. Uh, okay, deploy preview production. Um, okay, so let's take a look at this. So I, I think I can show this to you with no problem. Ooh. I'll just show you what the mess that I'm looking at now. This is a deployment log. I don't know why this is happening. I mean, I sort of do, but um, the logs are really just complaining about how long it's taking, and they're complaining a lot. What are the stickers on the laptop is a great question, which is in the chat, not in the Q&A. Fascinating. I wanted to look and see, why can't I scroll to the top of this thing? Why can't I? The deploy log is, I mean, let's look at the side. 405, are these numbers going down? Yes, they are. At some point, we're going to get to the top. This is insane. There we go. Deploy log. Netlify's robots are busy building and deploying your site today at 10, 12 a.m. And it's just taking a very long time. Uh, we can see the sort of build logs. And this is where I think it's just giving me the same warning over and over again. Because this is not a new 14 seconds every time, unless it's building a lot of pages in parallel and a whole lot of warnings are coming out. Anybody has any Gatsby, GraphQL, Netlify expertise and knowledge who wants to help me understand what's going on here? I'd be uh, certainly glad to um, glad glad for your um, contribution. All right, so stickers. Um, this is pro processing. Processing is the creative coding Java development environment that I started with in my teaching work, I would say, uh, back in 2003. That's 20 years ago. Almost, not yet. Uh, processing, this sticker is for Processing 3. There are newer processing stickers. P5 is the JavaScript. Um, P5.js, JavaScript, reimagination of processing. They both are part of the Processing Foundation. Processing Community Day, whether well, this is the sticker for an event in Los Angeles in many years ago. Um, these are, this is the coding train, this dot character, coding train, coding, ML5 is a machine learning library, Gotham Girls Junior Derby. So roller derby, you can't see that, can you? Um, roller derby, a uh, group that my daughter was involved with for a brief period of time. <coughs> Gloria Pickle, my dog, whoops, Coding Rainbow. If you know what Coding Rainbow is, then if you know, you know, that's the thing you say. Uh, Rise and Code. Hi, hello there is uh, Jason Hegland's an, uh, art business. I don't know what to call it. Find Jason Hegland and hi, hello there on Instagram. Makes wonderful art and stickers. Uh, so most of these are all Coding Train stickers, actually. Never forget this dot. I'll refactor that later. Um, you can get, you can buy these, or you can sign up to be a Coding Train member, and I will send you a sticker pack. I won't send it to you personally, <laughs> but uh, Jason, who makes all these stickers, will send it to you. Uh, okay. I wanted the uh, redirect to work. <coughs> Is it still deploying? We'll come back to that. All right. So let me talk to you about my two... Um, sans music. Don't worry. You can watch this back later. You can watch it back at 2x. Thank you, Coding Garden, for posting links in the chat to various things that I'm talking about. Do you guys hear that? There's a crackling noise. What is that? Let me mute. Is it just some weird? You guys don't hear any weird audio feedback or anything? Oh, you know what? I don't know what it is, but it's coming out of that monitor. <laughs> and I'm going to assume as long as it's not being broadcast, I can mute that monitor. Uh, Marius asked, will there ever be a video on the UUR bot? Please keep asking me that question. Right now, I'm kind of waiting. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of the television program called Severance, and I made a whole uh, sort of version of the Macro Data Refinement, which is this computer program that runs in the TV show. I don't want to risk spoiling anything. Go and watch it if you are able to and uh, haven't already. Um, I made a bot about one of the characters in the show. So I want to get, I want to make a lot of content about the show and those projects, but I think I'm going to wait until 
Um, I know when the season two premiere date is and then try to make that content in the lead up to it. So Marius, I, I don't know where you are and where you'll be many months from now, but keep on asking me that question because it's coming. Um, uh, okay, so let me start talking to you about um, the Apple II because this is gonna lead us to the project that I wanna to start today. I'm just curious, is this ever gonna turn on? No, I wonder if there's just something wrong with this iPad. No. All right, I probably shouldn't ask for your, um, what I think I need to do is I need to take this iPad and I need to just plug it into its own, uh, maybe this charging cable is no good. If we're going to have any chance of any uh, sound, I need to find. I have a plug. I have a, a, a um, what do you call this? A lightning cable. This is not plug. I'm going to plug it into here. I'm plugging it into its own power source over where you can't see. And this way I will just check it in a little while. It's plugged in, it's charging. I will come back to it. Okay. So the Apple II. The Apple II uh, computer was my uh, childhood uh, computer. Um, and I have always wanted to revisit it. And when my parents recently uh, moved, I was helping clean out the attic and found, I mean, I knew it was there and uh, this was always the plan. So it wasn't like, oh, this like amazing discovery as I unearthed it. But um, I was able to take home with me the, um, that Apple II Plus computer. Now, I, there was a live stream, you can find it, where I turned it on for the very first time since probably in close to 40 years, somewhere maybe 30, 35 years. Um, and if you go back and find that live stream, uh, it's working and it runs and I'm loading disks and doing all sorts of stuff with it. And then at some point during the live stream, it starts to crackle and make a sound. And this is a very common thing that happens. I'm gonna go grab it right now. Um, the old Apple II power supplies, I learned the c capacitors in them, they have a certain name for them, the Rifa capacitors maybe. If, you, if they sit for a long time, this is the actual power supply, they start to, they get, they fry, they, they burst, they crackle, they smoke up. It made, it was a horrible smell, smoke coming out of it. So I was very concerned and I thought all was lost. The good news is this is an easy-ish thing to replace. Um, if I was a bit more uh, comfortable with hardware, and I guess I can switch over to this view so you can maybe see it a little bit better. If I was a bit, more attuned to working with uh, uh, electronics parts and hardware and soldering. This one could probably be easily restored. Um, I was even told by someone who that's like, it doesn't even matter, just pull those out and use it anyway. <laughs> um, but what I did instead is I ordered a kit from Mi Re Reactive Micro, which is a uh, sort of like modern rebuild of the Apple II power supply and I hooked that up with the Apple II and uh, it was working again. Then I had some other issues and I won't go through all the different steps, but ultimately the Apple II that I'm using right now is mostly put together from parts that I bought off eBay. <laughs> so the monitor is original, the disk drives, uh, e even the, the um, I had to get a, 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 a new case, there's a different keyboard now. Um, so, you know, for me to say it's my childhood computer, it's like, it's the ship of Theseus, you know? <laughs> if I'm swapping parts in and out of it, eventually if I swap every single part, I, I'm totally butchering the tale of the, 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 the ship of Theseus um, uh, metaphor here. But, um, you know, is it really my childhood computer? Not really, but enough of it is, and the spirit of it is there. So um, I've been, I've now made three videos with the Apple II. Um, which you can find on YouTube. Um, all of the source code for those videos is here. Uh, they, oh, no, you're not seeing this. Um, I made a snake game, a fractal tree, and most recently this 3D cube. So for example, if I go in here, um, you know, I made a, did a few things in this video. 
I can um, I can look at the code. And one of the things you can do is you can find this basic code that I write in the video. And I'm sorry that this coffee mug, which should be over here, is blocking things. I can paste this. I can take this um, Apple to JavaScript emulator. There are two that I like to use. There is this emulator, which I will get to in a second, and then there's this emulator. So this is not a true, this one is not what you might call a true emulator. It's not emulating the Apple II hardware and processor itself. It's just converting the basic code into JavaScript, which allows it to run so much faster. So this is the actual basic code that I write in the video that renders and rotates this spinning cube. I can take that code and go over to this, which is a true emulator. And I'm going to uh, hit reset here so I can get to a DOS commit prompt. Um, I, don't, is, um, I don't know, do you say DOS prompt with the Apple II? Apple II prompt? I'm going to paste in the code. <laughs> so it, you can actually paste in this emulator, which is great, because it's like as if I'm typing in all these line numbers. Um, so this will take a little bit, and then now I can, uh, well, I, I, oops, I can run this code in this emulator, and you will see it uh, appearing momentarily, and uh, here it is. It is running incredibly slow. So one of the things that I address in the video is how could this be optimized? And this is something that I would love to go quickly and look at some of the comments because there were some great suggestions. And so far, I haven't seen anybody try any of these. I, you know, maybe not everyone just has all the time in the world to tinker around with AppleSoft Basic, <laughs> watch a code trend video. Let me spend all day seeing if I can optimize this, you know, 40-year-old uh, code base system. But um, let's take a look at the the comments briefly for this video and see what we can find out. Um, so I'm going to go over to videos. Um, I'm going to go to this uh, coding challenge On today's episode of coding, coding together. together. And I'm going to mute it, um, and let's let's take a look. Okay. So, um, whoops, I wanted to see the comments a little bit bigger. So let's take a look at this one. Uh, you should do all the multiply and divide using bit shift and addition use a lookup table for sine and cosine. So one of the things I absolutely don't bother to worry about, and we can go back to my code to see, is, you know, uh, so there's a lot of multiplication. And one of the things that's really absurd that I'm doing is in my effort to uh, explain all of the math and the way that I'm used to doing things now as a teacher, I want things to be very explicit and readable. And I don't mind having longer code that is less efficient if it's more understandable and relatable. And so I have a lot of multiply by zero, which is just absolutely a waste of computation <laughs> because we all know what multiply by zero is, but in my head, I'm leading up to the point where the rotation matrices might not always have a zero in them, and that could be a variable, so I need it in there. But even so, this is interesting for this comment to address, um, could I actually use bit shift and addition to uh, execute multiplication operations, and that would be faster. Uh, lookup table for sine and cosine. This was... Um, this was the most commonly, and I did mention it in the video, suggested uh, fix. Like one of the things that I do is I there is a loop here that I have to do these mathematical operations. Um, it's interesting that the Ace Magpie, by the way, right? It's the Apple II videos are how I started watching. So uh, I'd be curious to see, like, are you interested in the, you know, I literally a thousand other videos on the channel that have nothing to do with the Apple II. Um, so I have this loop that I'm doing eight times where, um, <clears throat> so if I had the sine operation and the cosine operation right here in the code, I would have to be executing those mathematical operations eight times, which I know would be very, very inefficient. So at least I'm calculating, and my finger won't go up that high, but at least I'm calculating them uh, once before the loop up here. And then, uh, but 
what if, but this is still happening every frame. So what if at the beginning we built a large array? Do we have enough RAM? And this is a consideration when you only have, you know, 48K of RAM. That's 48 kilobytes, not 48 megabytes, certainly not 48 gigabytes, 48 kilobytes of RAM. Could I make an array that has 360 elements in it? Maybe one calculation for every degree of rotation? I don't know. Um, and then look up the calculated values from that array. That would certainly improve things. Let's see if we can find a couple other comments. My, my goal for these live streams is to curate these in advance, but I, um, I love that he shows us his mistakes. That's great to hear. Uh, thanks, Coding Adventures. Everyone check out the Coding Adventures YouTube channel. Um, increasing performance. Okay. Excluding reprogramming in assembly. So programming in assembly language. I have the 6502 book. Uh, I might uh, like to investigate that. Pre-computed sign and co-file values. Deleting the entire HGR buffer in every frame takes a lot of time. This cannot be done during vSync, as someone suggested. Not even with The filling of the 4K bank with zero takes almost one second. Probably the largest contributor to lack of performance. Redraw the existing lines in black. Just keep two arrays and flip among them as you draw each page so you have always have access to the previous points and alternate the rotate subroutine to use either one. This is so great. I don't know if you're following this, but this is exactly what I need to do. Oh, there's a shape table functionality. So there's a lot, there's a lot here. Everybody read Nelson's comment. But really, I think this is the answer. And I'll, I'll show you, whoops, I'm in the wrong place. So what is, what is Nelson suggesting? So I am storing, um, sorry, I am calculating. Let me look, let me look back up. Ultimately, these are the points that I am drawing. I'm drawing everything from this array projected. Those are the final rotated and projected points of the cube into 3D. I'm storing them into two pairs of X, Y coordinates and drawing a line that is white. Before that happens, right? Before that happens, at the beginning, I call this memory address, which wipes the high resolution graphics buffer. And in my mind, that's like the easiest thing in the world to do, right? I have it, like it's literally just 280 by 192 pixels, just wipe the whole thing. That's like the fastest operation computers do now. But it's actually, it's gotta take every pixel, I guess, even the ones that are already black and turn them to black. It's very, very slow. Uh, and also the, 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 the refresh rate of the monitor and everything gets in the way, apparently. So, <clears throat> um, so the idea here would be for me to essentially duplicate this Every line that I draw, before I draw it, I erase the previous one with H color equals zero, which is black. So instead of wiping 280 times 192 pixels, I'm only wiping the necessary pixels. So I would need an additional array to store the previous locations uh, and then an additional call to this. It would be a lot, to, the reason I didn't do it is it's a lot more code and a lot more work. Um, I do this in one thing you can see, however, if you're interested, if I go back, um, I think, is it, did I upload it? Yes. So this particular example does that. So this particular example is just drawing a line. I'll show you what it does. Oops, I can't seem to get to the right place. Um, control C. Text. New. So this little simple program, which is just drawing a line, and by the way, oh, there's a whole other totally insane thing going on because that line's supposed to be white. <laughs> I don't have time. I mean, <clears throat> I have to move on at some point from my random digressions. But um, but this uh, build, oh yeah, var19, the idea of building the matrix outside of the loop is another great one. Um, that uh, a var19, if you were the same person who su suggested this maybe in a, in a pull request. Was there a pull request or issue? Let's find it. Um, yeah, rotation. Uh, so this is an example 
Uh, so, okay. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if this is the same thing you're suggesting. And Oscar had an Apple IIc that had 128K of RAM. Um, so this idea of constructing the rotation matrix just once before the draw loop with an angle of one degree, then use that same ma matrix every time to transform the current coordinates. You know what? Only now did this suddenly make sense to me. So I'm, I'm assuming always a cube that is uh, with no rotation. And so what I do is I calculate the rotation matrix to rotate it by one degree. Then the next time, no rotation. Two degrees. Then the next time, no rotation. Three degrees. What var19 in the uh, chat is suggesting is rotate it by one degree. And I already have that calculated one degree rotation matrix. So apply that to the one degree rotated one. And that would certainly, I think, help quite a bit. Um, so um, I, I would welcome pull requests with these improvements. If you are to do a pull request with the improvement, what I would suggest is um, add a new file. Oh, this is the wrong place. Add a new file uh, instead of editing one of mine, because I would like mine to remain the same exactly what I did in the coding demonstrations themselves. OK. I've got about an hour left. I, I don't know how I managed to continue to do this. I hope that people enjoy these live streams even when there's, I don't even know where I'm going or what I'm doing with things, but I think it's time. It's time to talk about the main event for today. And <clears throat> I kind of want to know, I'm, 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 I haven't taken a moment to stop talking, I think, for the last half an hour or so, and I can start to feel it. We take a few deep breaths here. Let's see if the Coding Train website has rebuilt. Can I go? I don't, uh, um, completed. OK, so if everything goes according to plan, if I go to the codingtrain.com slash choo choo, great. OK, so now I can talk about what I want to talk about. So uh, apologies, the, the link in the top right is technically incorrect, but I now have it redirect to the correct link, which is curiositystream.com slash choo choo, which is the link that you'll find in this video's description. So um, before I made any of those Apple II videos, I had the chance to work with uh, the streaming company Nebula, which I am a part of the, it's owned by creators and created by creators, one of which is me. Um, Nebula, if I go to nebula.tv slash what is code, um, you will see um, that I have this course um, on the website um, um, called uh, What is Code? And let me make it a little bit bigger. And uh, I guess I don't want to make it that. And it is essentially, it's for the total beginner. So I'm not 100% sure. I think that. I mean, it's my goal that anybody from total beginner to experienced programmer alike could enjoy and find this course interesting in terms of um, the my perspective on what is code and computing and a bit of the history behind uh, and context for programming languages and basic. But this is actually a set of step-by-step -step lessons for total beginners that covers uh, variables, conditionals, Update the banner to be the coding train. Oh, no. So the banner is just a fail. <laughs> I, this is all secretly me getting it so that you <laughs> have to like really type it in and you're more inclined to. I don't know what the four-dimensional chess game I'm playing with you here is. But anyway, this is a beginner um, course where I build a whole project. And I, I don't know. It was a really fun to make. Um, I think it can even like just play the introduction here. Uh, the production quality is better than anything I have ever uh, done myself. And I just want to thank uh, Nebula and the Nebula team for collaborating with me on this. So the- Hello, welcome. I oh, am hi. so excited you're here you, with You me. are, okay. My name is Dan and That's I have spent weird. All right, this is weird. Last 20 years teaching coding. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 20 blah, 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 blah. Coding, 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 teaching, teaching. I've heard it all before. Um, so the reason why I'm mentioning all of this is because today the, the sponsor actually of the coding train is Curiosity Stream. 
just put, hold on. Wait, wait, I have a fun idea. Uh, add, add image text. Okay. Uh, text, uh, the, uh, the, okay. Uh, the, uh, okay. Uh, This is a professional operation, people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you would never know. <laughs> you would never know that that was wrong. Okay. <laughs> um, the reason why I'm mentioning all this is because um, Curiosity Stream uh, is a streaming service with an incredible library of documentaries. Um, Dr. Hannah Fry has some in wonderful documentaries about math, maths. So if you like math and science, and if you like biology and animals and climate science and all sorts of stuff, um, Curiosity Stream is like one of my favorite streaming services. Like if I'm just sitting around and being like, what, what kind of interesting uh, uh, a math and science uh, related documentary do I want to relax to this evening? Uh, there's just literally thousands of documentaries. And with the Coding Train's um, uh, coupon code Choo Choo, you can get access to all of Curiosity Stream for $14.79 for the entire year. And what is totally new is previously, as of like a week ago, the Nebula class What is Code <laughs> was a separate purchase uh, somewhere in the $100 range uh, to, to view Nebula classes. But now, with uh, the Curiosity Stream bundle, which comes with Nebula, right? The Curiosity Stream co bundle comes with all of Nebula. So everything that's on Nebula. Um, um, and uh, my favorite thing on Nebula is. Uh, let's just look for it. I am like obsessed with this show. Jet lag, the game. <laughs> so uh, if you like travel and competition shows and like crazy weird challenges in four far away foreign places, uh, you will uh, we will not be able to resist this show. I'm so obsessed with it. And I know they just filmed a new season of it. Uh, my kids love watching it. My, I've been watching this with my daughter, and we're like the biggest Nebula fans. I just have one thing to say to all of you, which is Team Ben. I will go no further than that. Um, but so if you sign up for the Curiosity Stream bundle, which is like less than $15 for the whole year, you also get access to all of Nebula. And Nebula Classes comes with Nebula if you sign up directly, this is so confusing. This is my price hack. If you sign up for the bundle, then you can get all of Nebula classes for just $1 a month extra. So that's now the cheapest way to get the classes. I mentioned this on Twitter. Um, Graham's class has been really great for me to like learn how to do better audio for my stuff. Um, there's some other uh, Patrick Willems class, some great music ones. Um, so I encourage you to um, check. There's a really nice live streaming one that I don't see right now. So I, I'm sorry, I went on for so long about this. Um, um, so, but if you like the Apple II, my whole thing was, if you like the Apple II stuff, <laughs> you like documentaries, you're interested in the Nebula class and all of Nebula, the cheapest way now to get it is through the link that is on the top of the screen, thecodingtrain.com slash choo choo. Okay. Now, moving on. <clears throat> Um, yes, there was Tom Scott also did a video collaborating with the jet lag team. I don't know. I kind of like, I would love to play the jet lag game. Although I think I might be too old and like terrible at it. I'd be like, but what if I have to pee in the middle of the race? <laughs> that's literally what I would worry about. <clears throat> that that's going to get edited out, right? <clears throat> we're, we're on a tape delay, right? How long's the tape delay? What? No. No, no tape delay? Okay. Anyway, um, choo-choo. Um, my son, five, shows interest in programming. Any tips on a project want to use P5 doing together? Oh. So first of all, you're probably aware of this. Um, this is Danny asks this in the Q&A chat. Um, and let me, the the is always going to be there now. Let me uh, get that out of the way. Um, um, so you're probably aware of Scratch, which is a uh, block-based uh, coding environment that's great for kids. My 
kids have both used it when they were younger. Uh, P5, I, I mean, there's no rules to this, but my I would say probably P5 makes sense to start um, in the sort of like, well, here in the States, we would, we would say around, I would say around sixth grade, which is um, 11. My daughter's in sixth grade, so I know that. Um, but um, <clears throat> certainly I love the idea when I, when, when my, I think when my son was five and my daughter was like, two, no, no, he was more like four because she was a baby. We made a game in processing together, which was like, used a picture of her and a blueberry and we had to like throw blueberries at the baby. And then if the blueberries hit the baby, the baby would grow bigger. Somewhere on my, the depths of my laptop is this game that I made. So I do think um, there's a lot of fun things you could do and it sort of depends on what she likes. Um, I'm, you know, easiest for me to like sort of scroll through the coding challenges and see, but um, like a variation of like a game, like this pie in the sky game. She might like some of these fun like video things where you kind of like use the webcam and distort it, a uh, slide puzzle. And you said your son, sorry, I'm um, thinking of my daughter here. Um, slide puzzle uh, could be fun with kids, but and then, and then maybe um, any of these like algorithmic ones, like the snowflakes. So, you know, poke through these, see if any of these resonate with you. Some of them are obviously more complex than others. So you might look at the code and see how like, you know, how much code there is. Um, but, um, yeah, there's a lot, there's a, you know, I haven't really been making these and the last three have been Apple two plus. So, uh, but there, you know, there are 175 of them. So even though I've slowed down enormously in the last year in terms of these coding challenge videos, there are a lot. Okay. Um, good. Johan says I'm canceling Disney plus and Netflix for this. Well, I don't blame you. Although I, I'm really excited. I haven't watched Andor, but everyone's telling me Andor. Uh, is really, really good on Disney Plus, and I do have a Disney Plus subscription, so I should watch it. Okay, let's move over. So <clears throat> let's talk about the Oregon Trail. So this is the beginning of a journey that we are all going to go on together. Really me, and maybe you, if you, if you choose to accept. <laughs> let's go over to the Apple II Plus and get that going. Um, oh yeah, I have a button. Uh, and I have an hour before I really have to go. So we've got an hour for this now. I'm just looking for my Apple II button. I made an Apple II button. Did I forget to, is it this one? No. Where did it go? Oh, here it is, Oregon Trail. Okay. So I'm gonna bring my uh, secondary laptop where I have the chat going over with me here. Um, so let me know in the chat if the audio is good still. And I'm going to sit here. Oh, oh, I get to sit down. I never sit down while I'm streaming. Um, and I'm going to go to the live chat. And I'm going to turn the power on here. Now, before I go anywhere, before I do more, uh, can you see this? It's a, I guess I could pull it around here. It doesn't really matter. This, uh, I referenced, I talked about this in my most recent video where I talked about this floppy emu, which is a disk drive emulator. So essentially, um, I have an SD card, <laughs> which has you know room for a, thou a thousand floppy disks or more. I'm, I'm making that number up. I haven't done the math, but you know, this is a floppy disk is like 140K and this is like uh, four gigabytes, this SD card. I don't know why I said 32, because I, I think I said that in the video, but I was wrong. Um, so uh, what this will do is emulate the disk drive. Um, so I'm gonna turn on the monitor. Now, one thing might happen right now, and I'll be curious to know in the chat. Um, so the monitor is on, and I am 49 years old, <laughs> and my hearing and eyesight is atrocious, and there's no way I'm ever gonna hear the high-pitched whine that is coming from this monitor. But I know for a fact that um, when I released my first Apple II video, many viewers could hear a very high-pitched frequency sound going during the entire video and were complaining. So uh, if is that is something you can hear and it's bothering you, I will go back to OBS and try to put a low-pass filter on. Um, but I didn't bother to try to figure that out before I started streaming. 
So I'm going to turn this computer on, and hopefully, and you're going to tell me in the chat, you're going to see the output of this monitor on the blue in that blue screen that is empty right now that says no signal. Um, now it's whirring, and um, it's loading the uh, one of the disks that I used to um, that I was using when um, I'm sorry I'm like. Uh, I lost lost my train of thought. Uh, that should be the other one of the other coding train sayings. Um, I hear it a little, but it's fine. Says the Zad Gaming. Um, it's loading a disk. <laughs> Sorry. So it's loading a disk, and I can type catalog. And there's a bunch of things on this disk. This is like a DOS uh, three point three sample disk. Um, and I think my Mandelbrot program is on this one. Yeah, that's what I was using this for. So if I load the Mandelbrot uh, program in basic, I can look at the code. And you can see this is the code. Oh, this is not the final code. This is one. I wonder which one this is. This is not the final code that I wrote for, um, I don't think. Yeah, this is one that's good. This is one, I did a couple different ones. This is one that's drawing a random dot and coloring it according to the Mandel brought set. I can't see it at all. You can definitely hear it says Bon Bon. Um, let's, uh, so I'm curious, does, do you see, I don't see on this monitor, I don't see any color. I should probably hook my phone up to OBS so I can have a roaming camera here because you probably can't really see what's on this monitor. Obviously, you can see the output of it. You're sort of seeing the, uh, from the side. Um, but is this, are, are we using different colored dots that if they kept going would maybe make the Mandelbrot set? Not too disturbing, though. OK. I mean, I kind of want to, but the dogs are going crazy. Is Ness, is that for real? Ness writes, I can't hear it, but the dogs are going crazy. Um, OK. Um, I, I, got, I got to, yes, we see colorful dots. So I would love to let this run for a while, but we won't get anywhere if we do. So um, let's see, what else is on this? Whoops. Let's see what else is on this disk. Apple Vision, Animals. Oh, Int Basic, uh, FB Basic, Color Test, Brickout. Let's try Brickout. Come on, Brickout. You can load. By the way, did you know? Let's see if I can find it. Did you know that um, when I first got the Apple II Plus, I would load games off of a cassette tape? So I had literally a cassette tape, not a disk drive. And this is one of those original cassette tapes. I have no way of accessing the data on it. It says, Microcomputer Games, 1980, a division of the Avalon Hill Game Co. Um, I, don't, I should probably set the camera to autofocus, and then I could put this up real close. But the focus is locked right now on the Apple II computer. Um, but this is pretty wild. Planet Miners is maybe this game. Programs, TRS-80, Apple II. Yeah. OK, so oh, I loaded Brickout. One of the things that's wonderful, I mean, this is just not the case for computers today, is like, oh, I want to play the Brickout game. I got it on this disk. I can look at all of the source code for Brickout. Like, this is all of the source code for the Brickout game. And I could just edit it right here. So loading the game is not loading some binary executable compiled file that's proprietary, that's going to have in-app purchases and all that nonsense. It's literally, oh, I don't know what just happened there. Uh, cassette tapes were the norm in Europe. Floppy disks were mostly a US thing. That's interesting from Stig. Um, what song? So, there, so I don't know what just happened here. I think it crashed. I'm hoping. I I guess I'm gonna. Um, well, I was gonna play Brick Out, but let's move on to the Oregon Trail. 
So what I need to do on the floppy emu, and I'm sorry that you can't see this. If you watch my video, I show close-ups of how this works, is I am going to use, there's a little tiny screen on this, and I am going to navigate to find the Oregon Trail. Okay, so I am getting some comments about the high-pitched noise. So I'm going to go work on that uh, in, a, in a moment. Thank you for your comment. Where is Oregon Trail? Frogger, Moon Patrol, Oregon Trail 1, Oregon Trail 2. So um, <clears throat> while this loads, I'm going to restart the computer. And I'm going to load the Oregon Trail game. Uh, if anybody knows how to apply a low-pass filter in OBS, put that information in the chat. I'm assuming this is just taking a while to load. Um, Yoan asks about the Apple II. I kind of talked about that earlier in the live stream, but the short answer is yes, this is my um, childhood um, Apple II Plus computer. So I'm over here by the, you won't he probably hear the high pitch sound anymore because I've moved. <laughs> um, but I'm going to look under the mic and I'm going to go to filters. And I'm going to add a compressor, expander, game, noise suppression, noise gate. Which one do I do? Does anybody know? <laughs> I could Google this. Uh, OBS low pass filter. Uh, low pass. VST plugin. Oh yeah, BTB, um, use the equalizer, says Slog. Sorry, there's there's a this whole spam, scam issue going on on YouTube. There's a lot of uh, impersonation of the coding train and if, if I will never, um, I will never uh, be saying to contact me on Telegram because you won something. <laughs> So it's not me. Um, okay. So I'm going to, this, we're going to learn how to do this. Uh, filters, add, let's try uh, VST 2.x plugin. Please select a plugin. Oh, I don't have any of those. Okay. Uh, gain, expander, compressor, noise gate, noise suppression. Uh, no. So I have to install something? There's no EQ natively. Oh, there isn't? I just assumed this was like an easy thing for me to do. <laughs> so I might not be able to do this so easily. Uh, add, I see, compressor, expander, gain, invert, polarity, limiter. Wouldn't the limiter maybe work? Noise gate, noise suppression. Limiter. Threshold. No, that's release. The limiter is going to make it so that I can't yell and have distorted sound. Noise suppression will work. All right, we'll try that. I also have, well, now you can't hear it because I, I'm like a good 15 to 20 feet away from the Apple II. It's a big room. Uh, so I think if I go sit next to it, yeah. I know you want to hear the keyboard. Um, well, I don't mind installing a plugin. All right, well, let's try the noise suppression and see what happens. The noise suppression is now on. Um, so I just turned noise suppression on and I'm going back. I don't know why the Oregon Trail never loaded. Okay. Um, claims to be reading from the disk still, but do I need to like put in disk two now? I swear I I did this earlier.
Please insert side one of your organ <laughs> diskette, okay? Let's see if this works. Uh, I, it's funny, there must, I must have it on a different disk. Because I swear I was, I was running this. All right, so now we are loading disk one. Maybe it's going to tell me. Ah, there we go. I knew that this worked. OK. It's worse now. I can hear static. I do have the NVIDIA broadcast noise suppression. All right. I should add that. That's what I should use. I. It's funny. I have the N. It is. So hold on. Let me, um, let me fix this. Filters. Let me get rid of all these filters. Oops. I totally forgot that I'm running NVIDIA Broadcast. Um, so I am going to go to NVIDIA Broadcast. And um, noise. is now on. The sad thing about this is I think it's going to cut out sound from the game. But um, okay. So uh, what I would like to do as a project is I want to build a custom version of this game. Um, and <clears throat> that is maybe coding train themed. And also, I have volunteered to create a version of this game for a podcast that's called Renap. Rob and Akiva need a podcast. I'm sure the, the crossover between Coding Train viewers and Renap listeners is, you know, uh, the Venn diagram, there is exactly one person, me. Uh, the volume got a bit loud. Um, so I, I, people, I, people are telling me about the audio now. But um, so... I'm trying to decide what to do. I want to be able to have a way of making essentially like an Oregon Trail game, the engine for the game, that maybe there's like a JSON file that has all the script and data in it. So as much as I would love to like do a video where I sort of like build and program this game in uh, AppleSoft Basic, I think I just want to understand and look at the basic code for this game and then make a P5.js version of it. Um, so, um, so let's try the game for a little bit. So, uh, should we learn about the trail? Should we see the Oregon top 10? Um, let, should we just jump on in? Let's jump on in and travel the trail. Okay. Many kinds of people made the trip to Oregon. You may be a banker from Boston a carpenter from Ohio, a farmer from Illinois. Find out the difference between these choices. Let's find out the difference. If you're a banker, you have more money for supplies. A uh, farmer, you have the greatest number of points. Banker earns the least. Be a banker from Boston, a carpenter. Oh, I'm back here. What do we think? Anybody got a... Uh, Anybody got a version? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the sort of meme, I guess, the uh, the sort of known uh, thing is um, yeah, I don't know what's going on with these uh, scam uh, accounts on um, YouTube. Farmer. Okay, I'm I'm gonna go with Alf. Alf says, "Be a farmer." All right, we're going to be a farmer. Banker is the easiest. Boy, I, I love I love the Oregon Trail knowledge here. Everyone's saying one. Okay, fine. I'm going to go with the people. Who is the first name of the wagon leader? I guess it's me. Uh, choo choo. Who are the first names of the four other members of your party? This dot, refactor, 
Oh, it won't let me have a five. P5JS and um, processing. Oh no, processing. Are these names correct? Yes. Okay, so first of all, a lot of potential for these graphics. It is 1848. Your jumping off place for Oregon is Independence, Missouri. You must decide which month to leave Independence. All right, I'm going to ask for advice while I wait for the chat to, uh, uh, I guess I could run polls. Like I should just quickly run polls. Uh, month. March. April. May. June. Oh. Uh, July is not an option. It only lets me have four choices. June or July. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, April. See some votes for April. April is leading. Let's ask for advice. You attend a public meeting held for folks with the California Oregon forever. Fever, <laughs> sorry. Folks with the California Oregon fever told, if you leave too early, there won't be any grass for your oxen to eat. If you leave too late, you may not get to Oregon before winter comes. Leave at just the right time. There will be green grass and weather will be cold. Well, seems like we want to leave in May. But everyone's saying April, so I'll go with April. Okay, we're ending that poll. Four, you should buy equipment and supplies. You have $1,600 in cash, but you don't have to spend it all now. You can buy whatever you need at Nat's General Store. Uh, it is the Aura Ring, uh, Make asks. I'm sorry that I'm not seeing the Q&A right now. <laughs> it's kind of a fail here. Uh, Hello, I'm Matt. Let's, if we could slow down on the discussion about whether accounts are scam accounts or not scam accounts, I have no idea. I, I was only addressing the fact that um, there, it, there are, uh, yeah, there are, um, I noticed that there are some accounts called the coding train that are using my profile picture that are uh, replying to people's comments on YouTube. I've been trying to block them. Like I have a block for the word telegram right now, but then they're using like, it. yeah. So uh, Primer is exactly right. If if you hear from Primer or the Coding Train or anyone who is maybe a channel you follow and they're asking you to DM them, message them on WhatsApp or Telegram that you've won something, please ignore those messages. They are scams. Uh, Primer with the check mark looks like the legit primer to me. I have no idea if it's possible to impersonate the check mark on YouTube. Uh, we all know where things have gone awry recently with the check marks. Okay. Uh, and uh, whether or not it's the real primer, which I'm assuming it is, incredible channel with amazing uh, animations and cool interactive systems. So great. Okay. Uh, we're going to need a team of oxen and clothing, plenty of food, ammunition. Oh, I don't like that. Uh, spare parts for your wagon. Uh, all right. So which item would you like to buy? Uh, oxen. Two oxen and a yoke. I recommend at least three yoke. Six. Uh, some food. I recommend you take at least 200 pounds of food for each person. We have five people, so I need 1,000 pounds of food, 20 cents a pound, right? Let's get some extra. Uh, clothing. I need warm clothing. Recommend at least two sets of clothes per person. Each set is $10. Five people, 10 sets, $100. 
Let's take 15 sets. Ammunition. I don't want any ammunition. Can I get no ammunition? I'll just get one box just in case. Uh, spare parts. Uh, it's a good idea to have a few spare parts for your wagon. Here are the prices. How many wagon wheels? Five. Three. Okay, well then, three. Five. Okay, then three. Five. Then three. Okay. Uh, should I save money? Uh, should I save money? Or should I? I think I should save money, right? I'm going to keep going. Well, let's get extra food. The food won't go. Will the food go bad since I'm kind of not using the ammunition? Um, let's get another 400 pounds of food. And oh, oh, no, 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 no. It changed. It's not adding. It's not adding it up. That's confusing. So uh, 2,000 pounds. Okay. Remember to get toilet paper. I don't see that on the list, but it would be nice. All right, let's keep going. You're ready to start. Good luck. I have a long and difficult journey ahead. Now loading the wagon. We get my coffee. I forgot to bring it with me over here. By the way, is the um, high-pitched wine gone now? Oh, uh, you probably can't hear the music. Can you hear the music? The noise suppression is probably cutting out the music. That's sad. Okay. Okay. The weather is cool. The health is good. The pace is steady. The rations are filling. Oh, well, let's look at the map. Whoa, that is wild. I love that map. Okay, we got to make it. Let's press the space bar to continue. Let's continue on the trail. Okay. No music. All right, we got to turn off. Sorry. It's required that I turn off the nose noise suppression. Okay, we're turning off the noise suppression. Okay, uh, turn to size up the situation. Continue on the trail, check supplies, look at the map, change pace. And we're doing well. We should go faster, right? Strenuous pace. We're gonna go to a strenuous pace. Uh, let's continue on the trail. Mm. This dot has cholera. Oh no, this dot has cholera. <laughs> I'm so sad for this dot. We've got to, I've got to do something about that. Okay. No, no, no. Wait, get, let me do something. Yes, I want to look around. We gotta, we gotta help this dot. I don't want this dot. Anything to happen to this dot? Okay. Uh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do about this here? Stop to rest. 
Let's stop to rest. Will that help? Maybe I'll, let me check the supplies. Got oxen, got clothes, got that little bit of ammunition that I was forced to buy, plenty of food, money left. Okay. Maybe we better stop to rest. Uh, how many days should we rest? One? Let's rest two days. I don't know. Check supplies. Look at the map. Let's look at the map. I want to see where we are. Oh, so looks like we've gotten about this far. <laughs> I thought we were maybe be farther. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, two. Check supplies. Okay, wait. Two days. Um, so let's continue on the trail. Maybe we should change the pace. Can we keep it strenuous? Health is good. Rations are filling. The weather is warm. Let's continue on the trail. You must cross the river in order to continue. The river at this point is currently 625 feet across and 4.3 feet deep in the middle. You may. All right, I'm going to need help for this one. Attempt to ford the river. Caulk wagon and float it across. Take a ferry across. Wait to see if conditions improve. Get more information. Well, I don't mind getting more information. To ford a river. <laughs> I was going to ask, what is ford a river? I'm glad they're explaining it. it. means to pull your wagon across a shallow part of the river with the ox still attached. So that would have been my guess. I was assuming fording a river is like basically walking across the river. To caulk the wagon means to seal it. Um, so that I understood. The wagon would float across like a boat. On top of a flat boat belongs to someone else. I mean, I think if we have enough money, we should do the ferry, right? Ferry. Max Bitker. Hi, Max. Says the ferry. Okay. We're doing the ferry. Five dollars? Wait five days. So five dollars is definitely no problem. Is the waiting five days a problem? I really don't want anyone to get hurt. Let's wait. We'll go at a strenuous pace. Okay, we're waiting. Oh my goodness. We left in April, so we have lots of time. Are we going to make it there by, I, I only have, I have a meeting at noon, so, and I wanted to start working on this project, but, oh, look at that. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Going across the ferry. <laughs> this is awesome. All right. Safely across. Eighty-three miles to the blue, big blue river crossing. Okay. We're about to get to another river. Well, weather is good. Health is good. Weather is cool. Yes. All right, we're at another river crossing here. <laughs> yeah, I gotta ford the river before my noon meeting. I got a Zoom meeting at noon. I gotta make it to work and before then. <laughs> That's where my internet connection is for my Zoom meeting. Okay. Uh, weather's cool. Health is good. Pace is strenuous. The rations are filling. We're doing well, people. Continue on the trail. Sure. I mean, everything seems good. We, we waited a bit. I mean, check. let me check our supplies. Oxen, clothing, bu bullets. Again, not so happy about having the bullets. Plenty of extra stuff. Lots of food. All right. Continue on the trail. We're going to have to cross the river, right? Are we going to ford the river? The river is currently... Oh, this doesn't seem so bad. I don't know that we need a ferry for this one, right? It's only 2.4 feet deep in the middle, 230 feet across. I think we could attempt to ford the river. It's not even giving me a ferry option here. Let's 
I mean, I know what all these things are. We'll, we'll, we'll get more information. I don't, we, I don't think we need the conditions to improve, right? I don't think we need the con should we Should we forward or caulk? <laughs> yeah. If only Oregon was real. If there was really a place called Oregon, the dreamland, we could all travel there and be together happy the way we were meant to be. I don't know what voice I'm using there. Uh, <clears throat> So should I make another poll? People are telling me one. Let's do, we got a little time here. Let's do a poll. Uh, Ford, caulk, or wait. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I don't know where, um, somewhere in Brooklyn, there's a crossing that makes that sound, which is great because it makes it accessible. And, um, my daughter and I have this joke where if like uh, she wants me to stop or I want her to like stop and wait, we just, I just wait, wait, wait. Um, <clears throat> oh, I should have entered the poll. I was I was wasting time so you could vote. And then I forgot to hit add poll. No, ask your community. Get rid of this. Ask your community. Sorry about that. The poll is going live now. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to give it a minute here. Um, Algeros, this is the original Oregon Trail game. I wanted to play it through to have a sense of how it works and then at some point start programming it. Apparently not in today's live stream. Um, so everyone is saying Ford. It's a pretty, pretty clear Ford, so we're going to Ford it. Okay, here we go. I'm going to end that poll. Thank you to everyone who voted. Uh, okay, here we go. We're crossing. Please, let's make it across. Oh, I become stuck in the mud. We lost a day. That's not good. But we lost five days when we took the ferry, so that seems not so bad. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Big Blue River. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. We got plenty of food. Return. I'm just going to keep going. Oh, it's hot. That's bad. Warm. We pass a grave site. I mean, I suppose to honor the grave site, we should say yes, I would think. Here lies Andy, pepperoni, and cheese. What? Is this like somebody who played the game before? Who like entered their information and misspelled pepperoni and cheese? I, what is going on here? <laughs> it's very strange. I guess that's like somebody who played the game before who died there. We'll be able to say here lies, hopefully not this dot. Okay, Fort Kearney. Sure, let's look around. Weather is hot, the health is good, the pace is strenuous, the rations are filling. Uh, could you on the trail, look at map, change pace. I think we're in good shape. Let's just keep going, right? Weather is hot. The disc had those previous people, yeah. So wherever this disc came from, this is not my, this is came with the um, floppy emu. So this is one of the, uh, I didn't load this from another source to um, so whatever version they were using. Um, so I'm P0 asks, how is the YouTube stream colorful on the Apple screen green? This is a monochrome monitor. It cannot show color. And so it takes the analog video output and shows it without color. And the capture card on my, you know, 2022 Windows computer can take color, and the color signal that's going out is being converted into HDMI. Uh, let's continue on the trail. Oh, maybe it's a joke about Tombstone Pizza? Okay. 250 miles to Chimney Rock. Let's keep on. I'm worried that it's hot. 
We should look at the map probably soon. But I'm trying to get there before before my meeting. A thief comes and steals in the night and steals 61 pounds of food. I think we're okay. We have a lot. I, bought, I got a lot of extra food. Health is fair. Okay, hold on. Size up the situation. I'm a little worried about our health here. Uh, let's look at the map, see where we are. Okay, we're moving along. We're not even halfway there, though. Uh, check the supplies. Should I rest? Plenty of stuff here. I should rest, right? Increase the pace? Yeah, I'm going to increase the pace. Good, good idea. So let's rest. Rest for two days. And then change the pace. We're going to go to a grueling pace. And continue on the trail. Chimney Rock. I mean, should I stop looking around at every stop? Weather is cool. Health is fair. Oh, okay. I, I, fine. Continue on the trail. I don't need to look around. All right. Yeah. Let's go. Fort Laramie. Come on. No, 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 no. Just go. Grueling pace. Oh, please flip the diskette to side two. Okay, by the way, there's a small chance this is now going to be the end of playing the Orchid Trail because I have no idea if the emulator is going to work with flipping the disc and reloading it. But um, that's fine if it doesn't uh, because then we can switch over to thinking about how we might do this uh, with P5 or as a browser-based thing or we can maybe look at the code for it. Um, so I need to press eject disk, okay? Then I need to go to Apple II stuff, five and a quarter inch disk, games. Uh, and now I'm going to Oregon Trail 2. I've loaded that, so it's loaded in there. I should be able to press spacebar to continue. I think it's working. Yeah, it's loading from the disk, amazing. Uh, I, I'm going to say no. I don't want to look around. It's time to go. We, we don't we don't got all day here. Yeah, 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 the music is so great, but go at your grueling pace. Inadequate grass. That doesn't sound good. Inadequate grass. What does that mean? This grass. This grass is inadequate. Only adequate grass from here on out. Bad water. Health is poor. Okay, okay. Yes, we need to look around. Our health is poor. And so uh, we're going to... Well, what's happening with the food rations? Filling. No, I want it to be filling. Okay, we're not changing the food rations. We are, I guess we have to stop to rest. Let's stop to rest. Three days. I don't care if it takes a lot of time. I just want the, the real time of playing the game to go quickly. Okay, uh, the health is fair again. Should I rest more? Let's see if we rest more while I get my health to be good. Health is still fair. All right, we gotta go. We gotta go, people. Go on that grueling pace. Yep, yep, yep. Move it along. 102 miles. Keep going. Thank you, uh, Coding Garden, for helping moderate the chat. Um, lose trail. Lose four days. Come on, people. Keep going. 
<laughs> yes, and let's keep the chat on topic. And that topic is the Oregon Trail. Can we get gaming live streams on the Apple II? That's basically what this is. Uh, I don't want to look around. No, keep going. <laughs> Although I love seeing all the trail divides here. Oh, see the map. Okay. So uh, we're going to need another pole here. Um, start a poll. I forget what they were already. So I don't, it's unclear to me what I'm looking at in terms of where I want to switch. But uh, Green River. Green River or Fort Bridger. I guess it's a matter of do we want to cross a river. Maybe the river is faster, but you have to deal with the risk of crossing the river. I'm going to go for the river then. Um, I'm putting a poll up. I'm going to look at the map again because I don't actually see. Um, I don't actually see which is the like. Oh, I see. Like, is it like going directly across the river versus going to this fort? And maybe it's faster. I don't know. It's not really giving me a lot of information. Um, it's a poll. 62% uh, right now for Green River. All right. We don't got a lot of time, so I'm going with the people. Green River. All right. Move it along. Very little water. Like, I'm out of water? Oh, no. One of the oxen is injured. Find wild fruit. I found wild fruit? I love wild fruit. Okay. And Green River, would you like to look around? Yeah. No? I just want to cross the river. I don't want to look around. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here we go. What are we going to do? 400 feet, of course, 20 feet deep in the middle. We will not be fording this river. <laughs> uh, definitely taking a ferry. Let's just, let's just go for the ferry. Five dollars. Four days. Only four days. I had to wait five days last time. And plus I get to rest. Don't I get to rest those four days? Yeah. Let's do it. Oh, we end this one. Uh, De Deanna Lim is asking, I wonder what algorithms are for deciding whether a bad thing happens. I'm assuming it's just like a random number generator. Okay. We're Green River Crossing. Let's go. Don't get stuck in the mud. Ferry got across. Amazing. We gotta keep going though. 144 miles to Soda Springs. Let's go, this grueling pace. 1135. Bad water, bad water, bad. Uh, forward everything. Fine, oh, more wild fruit. Keep going, I love wild fruit. Bad water. Oh, health is poor. One of the oxen died. I should probably stop. Let's stop and rest. The health is poor. Nah, it hasn't told me anybody's... Uh, yeah, let's look at Soda Springs. We'll stop. We gotta look around here. Okay. Um, uh, check supplies. Oxen. We have plenty of extra oxen, I guess. Still have plenty of pounds of food. We have money left. Um, stop to rest. Uh, two days. Health is fair. Continue on the trail. Okay. All right, keep going. We lost two days. It's June already. This is bad. Uh, no, we're going to continue. Very little water. No, 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 no. There's a lot of forts. I don't need to see all of them. All right, we're going to Snake River Crossing, people. Get ready for another ferry ride. Or maybe we'll caulk this time. Let's caulk the wagon. It's hot. The health is poor. Very little water. Bad water. 
We've got water problems. This dot has measles. It's always this dot. This dot is getting sick all the time. That poor, poor little this dot is so frail. Take care of the this dot. I mean, we should rest, right? But let's get to the river first. Ah, these thieves are always stealing our food. And the grass is always inadequate. There's nothing I hate more than inadequate grass. I'm, 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 I'm okay, you are now at the Snake River Crossing. Yeah. Actually, I don't want to look around. I just want to go across, across the river. Okay. Um, I think there's some, I, I think this game is a, is a little bit dated, <laughs> to say the least. Um, uh, <clears throat> doesn't, doesn't hold up. Uh, let's see, what am I looking for? Continue on the trail. Health is very poor, but we might get to rest if we're going to take a ferry. Thousand feet across, six feet deep in the middle. Six feet isn't insane. We could caulk. Um, um, let's try caulking the wagon. It's going to be a disaster. <laughs> oh, we're so close to the end. I had no trouble. Genius. It's very hot and very poor. All right, we should rest, right? Oh, processing as measles. So oh, no. Okay, okay, we gotta rest. We gotta rest. Processing and this dot are both quite sick. Let's stop to rest. We don't got a lot of time. We're gonna rest one day. Hey, Kevin Schraher, thank you so much for joining and the support. Continue on the trail. Um, inadequate grass. The health is poor, not very poor. We've improved our health. We have very little water, which is worse than little. Oh, the oxen is injured. Inadequate grass. When, when are we going to get some adequate grass in this uh, on this trail? No. I don't want to look around. I have like 10 minutes. I do want to look at the map. I want to see how, how it's July already. I think it's getting kind of too late. Like we're, we're supposed to get there sooner. Rough trail. Health is very poor again. Health is poor. This dot has cholera. This dot is really keeps getting cholera. Very poor. But it's, we don't have time here. We can't rest. No, I don't. Well, all right, let's find. Let's look around. Blue Mountain sounds lovely. Ah, uh, the Blue Mountains. Uh, look at the map. Oh, we are so close. Come on. Come on, team. We can get there. Uh, maybe we can rest one day. Let's rest one day. And let's check the supplies. Do I still have food? Pounds of food left, 450 pounds of food. That seems good. Let's go. We're so close. Uh, head to Fort Walla Walla. Head for the, which one do we want to do? Uh, Fort Walla Walla. Or what was the other one? Other one. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. Uh, oh, we don't want to go to the fort. We don't want to go to the fort. That looks out of the way. The other one is the Dollies, the Dales. Um, oh, I can start even in July. I guess I'm doing fine on time. People are saying to go to Fort Walla Walla. Shouldn't I go the other way? All right. Oh. I think I put my thumb on the scale there. Uh, all right, I'm gonna give it another uh, 20 seconds. Oh, oh no, it's it's a tie. It's a tie, I think I put my thumb on the scale. Drop this, all right. 
Okay. Now, other one. Other one. In other words, the Dales uh, is uh, is winning out. Don't don't listen to me. Stick with your heart. If you believe in Fort Walla Walla, vote Fort Walla Walla. It's pronounced the Dolls. Thank you, DJ Mangus. All right. The, the Dolls is clearly winning right now. And by clearly, I mean by six points, 53 to 47. I don't... Somebody call Nate Silver to tell me if, uh, if, 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 if I've got a good enough sample size. All right, we're going for the dolls. So I, it doesn't look like I'm going to get to coding this. Um, this spot dot has a snake bite. Oh, my goodness. This dot is cursed. Poor this dot. <sighs> This dot is really suffering. This dot has had cholera twice, measles, and a snake bite. Nobody else is having these kind of issues. This dot has died! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! I wish I had my, like, if I had my, like, sound effects, I would... Do a eulogy. We should we should say a eulogy for this dot. This dot, you always stayed with us. We never forgot you. You always helped us with our properties and our classes. Our bouncing balls would never have bounced without this dot. Our particle systems would not be systems or particles without this dot. Thank you for your service, this dot. You will always be remembered. I'm at the dolls! No! We're going there for this dot. We will make it there. No more breaks. Strenuous pace for this dot. Float down the Columbia River. Yeah, float down the river. Here we go. I don't have a lot of time left here. Uh, we're going to float down the river. Our rivers have never steered us wrong. The rivers have worked for us. The dolls will always fill my heart with memories of this dot. Use the arrow keys to guide your raft. Oh my god, this is exciting. Okay, everybody, you ready for this? After passing the third direction sign, land your raft at the trail to the Willamette Valley. Okay. Oh my god. What? Okay. All right. Oh, okay, here we go. Come on. I'm so scared. Wait, move out of the way of that rock. Iceberg ahead. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Oh my goodness. So we definitely want to add some mini games in. Wait, is that where I need to land? Is that where I need to land? Uh-oh. I'm so confused. Did I miss it? Or is that just an, that, that didn't look very like the landing. All right, I'm just going to keep going. After the third sign. Okay. I wasn't paying it up close enough attention. So that was the first sign. That's the second sign. These are arrows telling me to keep going. Keep going. Okay. Okay. Unfortunately, the chat, you're like 30 seconds behind me. So. No, no, wrong way. I got to stay on this side, I'm assuming. Oh, no. Oh no, there's a rock coming up. This is going to be quite the maneuver. Wait, but that's the third sign. No, wrong way. No, go, go back. <laughs> okay, okay. Which way? Oh, that's the trail. Which way? That's the trail. This way is the trail. No, this way. Go this way. Did I make it? Was I? One moment, please. <laughs> One moment. Da, 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 and Bingo was his name, oh. The, the dog and Bingo was his name, oh. Be okay. Uh, congratulations! You have made it to Oregon, and only one person died. It wasn't really a person. It was like a dot. That's part of the code. It's like a like a character. What ASCII value? We're fine. 
P5 survived. Processing survived. We'll be fine. We're fine. Four people in very poor health. One wagon, 11 oxen, nine square parts, 15 sets of clothing, 20 bullets, 319. See, I never used a single bullet. This I am the most proud of. I should never have bought those bullets in the first place. <clears throat> it's Willamit. Willamit. Sorry, what was I saying? <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, 392 pounds of food. And to see if you qualify for the Oregon top 10, please flip your disc at the side one. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, going to uh, Oregon Trail, disc one. There we go. Um, all right, press the space bar to continue. Are we going to be in the top 10? That is the real question. Yes! I don't know who these people are. All right, Stephen Meek, David Hastings, Andrew Sublet, Celinda Hines, Ezra Meeker, Richard Escobar. We're coming for you, William Vaughn. Richard Escobar. We have made it into, is that eighth place? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth place. Right, it's the top 10, and that's the spot before 10, which would be nine. Um, <clears throat> the coding train. No, no. All right, fine. Coding train. Greenhorn. All right, would you like to make any changes? No. I am forever inscribed into this Oregon Trail top 10. Now I will just now connect to the internet to post a tweet, to tweet about my high score. <laughs> All right. Um, by the way, let's look at the learn about the trail. Try taking a journey, cover wagon across 2,000 miles of plains, rivers, and mountains. Try on the plains. Okay. Across the rivers, your money might take a ferry, or you can ford the river about supplies. All right, so I think we've seen, ah, you can use these monitor, you can use these colors to adjust your monitor or television. So this was a thing that uh, you had to calibrate. So the, uh, it, you know, when you, if you had one of these Apple IIs and one of the monochrome monitors, you could hook it up to your color television set. And then depending on the dot and using the dials on the back of the television set. And in fact, I have a color monitor here. So we could see, I think, I think this one is a color monitor. It might not be. This is a Apple monitor, Cupertino, California, model G0990S. Um, yeah, I thought there were, maybe this one isn't color, does it say? Anybody recognize, anybody recognize this monitor? I have another one also that was definitely color. This one might be monochrome. Um, somewhere around here, I have, uh, oh yeah, it's, it's underneath here. So there's definitely a color one there. Anyway, we don't need to go into that, but I'm just curious. Let me, I have to go look. I have to go peek because I can't see what it's outputting. Orange, green, blue, violet. Oh yeah, looks pretty good. All right. Control S, that's how I could have changed the sound. And all right, so I'm gonna uh, stop now. I'm going to turn off the monitor and the computer because it is 11.50 and I have run out of time. So I'm going to come back to my regular streaming setup and kind of talk about what's next here because <clears throat> um, let's see if my <laughs> soundboard charge so I can play some outro music. I totally did not. Um, totally did not. Uh, all right, so let me come back to here. I don't know what's going on with, um, I don't know what's going on with 
that iPad that I use for sound. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, let me tell, let me check the Q and A. Uh, oh no, so live chat questions. Would you make River Crossing a challenge for the player in the remake? So I'm I'm kind of not sure what to do here. So let me actually just go look really quickly. I think in one of these emulators, I only have a few minutes here, but let's just check this one. So game, this emulator I think has the Oregon Trail game. Uh, here it is. Okay, so I'm gonna do open. So um, in this emulator, now I can power cycle. So if you want to do this yourself, you could use this emulator. You could sort of follow along with what I'm doing. And um, <clears throat> what is going on here? This is a different version of it, maybe? I love this wacky animation here. What is going on? Okay, I don't have time for this. I wanted to see if I could take a look at the Oregon Trail code. Um, oh my goodness, I think I'm just gonna control C this. Oops, let's see if we can look at the disc. Oregon Trail. It's got a lot of other things on it too. Let's see if I can load it. There's a fly buzzing around me. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty sure we are now looking at the entire source code of the Oregon Trail game. Um, not entirely sure. Obviously, I can't really tell, and there's a lot of peaks. In... So, I don't know. I'm a little skeptical there. That doesn't seem like... I don't understand where all of the data was coming from for the game. If I run this, oh, this is like totally a different version of it. Interesting. This is like a different version of the game, but um, so hold on. So uh, let's look in one more place that I'm curious about. Um, can't remember or if Oregon Trail is here. Text adventure. There's this text adventure, which is a different one. That's fun. Um, other, I thought I saw it here, but I guess not. Tech, that was a text only one. I really like the graphics one. Um, so this looks like could it be um, yeah this looks like this is the text only one that we were just looking at so it's sort of interesting to see anyway I, I don't need to sort this out so my question is how do I want to create a version of this in p5 and I think right now what I'm going to do, because I literally have just, I have negative time left, because I really meant to leave six minutes ago, is I'm going to create a new repo. And I, I'm sure this exists already. So there's a question in my mind of, should I just adapt an existing code base or emulator? Um, or should we totally rebuild build it from scratch? But Oregon Trail um, emulator. Emulator is kind of wrong. I'm just going to say, let's call it the, I mean, I think I want to make it a direct 
port of exactly what I just played, maybe, you know, uh, removing some of the culturally insensitive parts about it. Um, or you could just like build a version of it that's just straight starting with like sort of coding train themes. Um, the Oregon Trail. So, but I'm just going to call this repo Oregon Trail and how <laughs> to read me. And if people have some ideas or proposals for how to get started with this and you want to contribute to it, I mean, I'm going to come back and stream about it. Maybe I'll make a video about it. Um, maybe this weekend I'll just turn on the streaming again. Uh, what I would suggest is uh, file some issues. Because if you want to participate in this, um, file an issue to raise your hand, to offer an idea. I'll try to, if I have time today, start building this out in some way. Um, and um, we should see. Um, call it the coding trail. Yes. So that would have made sense. So, I, But I've got to run. Um, thank you again to... Um, uh, Curiosity Stream <laughs> for sponsoring. Uh, if you missed my, uh, if you missed my whole spiel about the Nebula class, what is code? Um, you can uh, go back to the archive of this and watch about it. But the this is now. Um, uh, you you could sign up directly, but um, uh, for uh, um, for uh, Nebula and you will have access to the Nebula class. But the price hack that I'm offering you is to get the Curiosity Stream bundle, which gets you Curiosity Stream plus Nebula for $14.79. And then for $1 a month more or $5 for the whole year, you have access to all of Nebula classes. Um, and um, thank you, Coding Garden, for, for posting all these links. Um, I don't know what I'm doing next. I really got to work on the nature of Codebook. I have made a lot of progress but I'm behind still. So that's kind of my reason for not streaming so much, but I would feel better about saying that if I had made more progress, but maybe I'm just too hard on myself. But I am, on the nature of Codebook, I am deep and working on. You can follow it at, um, it's on GitHub, you can find it. Join the Discord. <laughs> I'm tired, uh, check out the shorts. Uh, check out all this stuff that I talked about before. I've got to go. I'm going to put the goodbye screen on, but I have no music, so I will sing it. I can find some of the music, though. This dot, this dot, this dot song. Never forget this dot, uh, this dot. Thanks for all of you for tuning in. I'm going to end the Q&A. Sorry that I kind of didn't really deal with the Q&A, but what's good is I can give some feedback now to the uh, product. I I'm still talking. We're just, goodbye. Hold on, I've got an idea. As always, this you might not actually know existed. I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget the this dot, this dot. R.I.P. This dot. This dot, this dot song. You knew you win. R.I.P. This dot. This dot. This dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget the this dot. I'm gonna do the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, the this dot song. Never forget the this dot. Somebody composed that song for me. About how graphics mode works. The first thing it's showing me 